problem for tomorrow, and again, this is the only problem we're looking at here, the fact that uh, the NASDAQ 100 held, and you can see here how, you know, after the big sell-off and you had over... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future hey guys good evening everybody welcome to another edition of uh, the axis of trader.com nightly wrap-up show hope everybody is doing okay uh, my apologies I, I didn't have a chance to record the video yesterday um, I had some personal things I had to take care of so unfortunately uh, it took a lot of my time yesterday in the afternoon and the evening, so I apologize for that. So let's kind of, uh, you know, let's kind of get into it. Um, so we're kind of post-election. Again, a lot of controversy is still up in the air. Um, Trump is, is obviously, um, you know, he's, he's saying, look, there's fraud. There's fraud going on. Um, you know, something's not right. Uh, he's definitely contesting the election. And, you know, the saga keeps on going on and on and on. Um, the market, you know, had that big, big run last week. If you guys remember the last video I did, it was obviously um, the weekend update. And we had the NASDAQ going up 9%. So going into uh, yesterday's session, like we talked about on the video on the weekend, you know, common sense said there was going to be some sort of profit taken just because, again, a 9% move uh, in the NASDAQ is not a little thing. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, but what we started seeing yesterday, and obviously the big headline of the day yesterday, was the fact that, that Pfizer was going to have a vaccine. Uh, it was really aggressive. 90%, uh, I believe, of all the trials uh, had a really good positive result. And we saw this massive surge yesterday, really big surge uh, in the Dow. At some point, it was up 1,400 points. Uh, but that had a flip side effect of what was happening in the NASDAQ. If you notice uh, the NASDAQ names yesterday, and obviously if you traded yesterday, you kind of did notice, there was a huge disconnect, an absolute uh, ginormous, enormous, whatever uh, adjective you want to use. But there was a very, very clean cut case that they were taking money out of uh, the NASDAQ names yesterday and into the Dow Jones industrial average names. And you could see the big disconnect from kind of day two today in the NASDAQ composite versus what you're seeing in the Dow, um, in the Dow, what you're seeing in the IWM, and what you are seeing in the spies. Because the NASDAQ names really set the tone at the March lows um, of COVID, right? At the start of the pandemic, uh, pandemic this was obviously the first group that was going to get taken down. Now, once Pfizer came out with that news, or at least that, that PR, you already knew that first day yesterday, the stocks that were going to be on the chopping blocks were obviously the ones that benefited from the whole stay-at-home movement. Obviously, ZM was the first one. Yesterday got destroyed. And you started making your list yesterday of all the names, uh, the docus, the ZMs of the world, uh, the FSLYs. I mean, they were just literally going one by one yesterday, one by one. They were just taking them down uh, very, very uh, aggressively. Also, the ZS, right? ZS got murdered as well. So going into today's session, there was a day two, okay? There was legitimately an opportunity that if these stocks gapped up, again, remember, nothing has changed. Um, the idea that, that there is optimism now, there is some sort of uh, light at the end of the tunnel for all of us, right? To kind of resume our lives like we knew we had from just even the previous March, just to kind of get our lives back together. You knew there was a high probability today, and we'll talk about the pivots in a second. I mean, literally, I think 90% of all our pivots today were to the downside continuation of these stay-at-home stocks, and they got really, really murdered today. We'll talk about that in a second. But, but again, what, what, what I like, what I saw today's session was, number one, again, the market gapped up, okay, uh, tape gapped up, and again, we stuck to our guns. Guys, it's so important, whatever research you have the night before, you have to let that research play out till at least the first two candles. Again, uh, for all you guys who are trading, you know, watching this broadcast for the first time, I trade six 60-minute channels for the whole day. That's it. There's only six candles for the day. So for me to, you know, for me to have some sort of reservation that my game plan is kind of going 
uh, by the way sign, I need at least the first two candles of the day for the price action to tell me I'm wrong. And we came in today, um, literally, we came in today uh, with the idea there was going to be a second day, literally a second day of potential washouts. And we covered this at morning strategy. Um, you know, I, my game plan today was watch these stay at home stocks. And if they got stuck at supply, again, remember yesterday's move was tremendous to the downside, um, you know, really, really aggressive. So if we were going to get a second move today, we needed those channels to confirm. And, you know, not only that the stay at home stocks got absolutely murdered, and this was one of the best opens I, I could remember uh, in a very long time, but the, sh the long bias plays worked incredibly well as well. And, and that's kind of the key. And the moral of the story is, again, not every single trade is going to be for everybody. Okay, you, you know, if you don't trade Tesla, you shouldn't watch Tesla. If you don't trade Zoom, you shouldn't watch Zoom. Again, again, you're not trading the stocks. You are trading uh, the process. And whether you're trading a $2 stock, a $20 stock, or a $2,000 stock, it's not about what the stock is going to do is what the process is going to do if it confirms the proper way. And that's exactly what happened today. Uh, some longs were really good. Uh, the shorts got absolutely destroyed. One of the cleanest opens um, I can remember in a very, very long time. And I actually tweeted out, it was like 954. And again, it's not one of these social media slogans that people say, well, you can only trade 15 minutes a day from anywhere you want. No, 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 no. You can't. Okay, but this was a, one of those opens that like everything lined up really, really well. The shorts confirmed, they went green to red, they confirmed previous channels, and they got absolutely destroyed. Let's talk about these pivots one by one. Uh, Fisker, I actually caught on the long side. Uh, Fisker is again uh, one of these EV plays that they actually make a really, really cool car. I, I think for, for all you guys who, who Google the Fisker, it's a really cool car. It actually looks like in a weird way kind of like a poor man's Bugatti. I, I know it sounds really weird, but if you actually look at it, it's actually a really good looking car uh, for a pretty affordable price. And you know, my comments were they did an offering uh, last night, they brought down the stock. And I said, look, Fisker is shaking off their offering. If it can just build above the $15 area, it got rejected several times, it could go. So Fisker actually went, it was actually a pretty good move considering um, how bad the, you know, the tape was, especially in the morning. So you had that big sell off yesterday, they reclaimed the $15, $15 move and went right into uh, $15.50 supply. It was actually a pretty decent trade. Um, what I like, what I saw about Fisker, it looked like it was about to sell off. Again, they trapped some uh, really aggressive shorts, early shorts later. And even though the price action during the middle of the day didn't really show you how strong the stock was, but it actually was pretty good. And the fact that they reclaimed this whole trend line here around the 1370 level is very bullish. Another thing you kind of want to watch this thing in the future, um, if you guys remember how NIO started and XPEV, they started buying near term um, out of the money calls, right? If you, like uh, on NIO, especially when the stock was like 26, 27, they started buying those 32 to 33, 35, 37, 40 dollar calls, and then the stock exploded. We actually started seeing some first indication of out of the money call buying on this name. Um, I believe somebody bought the November 20. $20 call. So I want to watch this thing, not necessarily for tomorrow, but I want to watch this thing. If it starts reclaiming this top of the supply, we could get a second run and maybe a cleaner run there. So keep an eye on that uh, for the future. Uh, Netflix, 467, 466. Ironically, Netflix was the first one to turn around back to the upside. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but here is Netflix. And again, the, the stay-at-home stocks got really hurt. So here's the whole 466 467 level went all the way down to like 463. Not a big, big move, but I think what's more important about this Netflix, this is the first one to turn around and we'll kind of get into what I believe could happen for tomorrow, or at least uh, a possibility. So nice little move there on Netflix. And then things started getting uh, incredibly aggressive. Again, you started noticing one by one, guys, it was all the theme. One by one, they started taking these uh, stay at home COVID safety net plays uh, down. And they weren't just taking them down a dollar or two. They were taking them down incredibly aggressively today for the second day. And again, uh, the green to red, again, remember, it's not a momentum. It's, it's, excuse me, it's not a pivot. It's just momentum. But once they started confirming these bottom channels, they got absolutely destroyed. So ZM, uh, 401, 400, if it builds below, can flush. 
Uh, look what ZM did, just, just destroyed. So here was the 400, 401 area. You see this whole channel here, guys? Absolutely destroyed, went all the way down to 366. Um, Docu, 196, held twice daily chart. Again, remember, daily chart is always more important than the 60 minute. Uh, 196 held twice if it builds below can flush. Again, Docu is part of the whole uh, stay at home movement, right? So here was the 196. That was yesterday's, right? That was the low from uh, November the 2nd. It was yesterday's low. It took out the 196, went all the way down to 185. Again, these stocks got destroyed. There's, there's no other way uh, to talk about it. Frog, uh, 60 is held twice. If it starts to build below or can flush, here was Frog, right? A pretty basic chart. This is one of the, you know, here is the low here, 60. Yesterday's low was 60. Sometimes you do get obvious chart looking patterns that you can visualize right away and you could attack. So here is the 60, took out 60, uh, went down to 57. Uh, very aggressive here. And, and here's where some of the longs uh, really got super aggressive. So Boeing uh, 185 needs to build. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who caught Boeing. Uh, it took out the 85, and again, this was the daily chart, right? Took out yesterday's high, reclaimed supply, and went all the way up to 194. Just a monster, monster move on Boeing. Uh, again, short-term, uh, 200 call expirations, both the weeklies and next week. Uh, started trading as well. Uh, ZS, I caught a pretty good trade in ZS. Again, stay-at-home theme, 128, 127. If it builds below, can flush more. Uh, here was ZS, right? Here was ZS. Right, so it traded yesterday right into rising support, put in a low of 128.76. I got short on the 128, got pretty hit pretty hard, uh, went all the way down to 128. And again, you'll see and you'll notice tonight a lot of these names put in hammers off of levels, which is a short term bullish uh, signal, but again, it's not as clear as day. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Marriott, I still like for tomorrow, never came close to this area here, obviously take on the way down um here comes 1120 calls so big you know, pretty good move on on uh, fsr i was pretty happy with the move uh new lows again a huge move every, everywhere primarily uh those sell signals on the stay at home got plays obviously um uh fsr was a good good move off that 15 dollars level uh boeing was a monster move and then we started getting really really patient and then I court, you know, I you know I recorded the video, you know, huge move, sweet move there. So then I court, I recorded kind of this like, you know, really quick synopsis, and I was like, hey guys, like, what do you want to do next? I mean, literally, we had so much value here at the open, and it's very very important uh, once you catch that wave. And again, you don't catch that wave every single day, uh, but things be you know becoming very very clean. But once you do, you, the last thing you want to do is kind of overtrade to kind of start paper cutting yourself on less value plays. Um, so it was very, very important to kind of sit and wait. And again, here is another you know, beautiful play. Beyond got murdered yesterday on that, on that um, uh, initially on the McDonald's PR, and then McDonald's failed to disclose that they were partners with Beyond on the new meatless patty, and then they came out with earnings, and they got destroyed on earnings. But Beyond started coming back, and uh, 122 uh, rejected four time needs to build. Again, experienced traders only. Not every channel is for everybody. So here is Beyond. Here is the 122. You see these four four bars here, guys. Again, every channel makes a difference. You have to you have to really embrace the the the, the data you're getting on the chart here. So uh, 122 is the high here. 22 is the high here. 22 is the high here. 22 is the high here. It finally got above the 22 and just absolutely exploded uh, all the way up to 132. Pretty big move here. And again, uh, bingo. Uh, and I said, listen, p you know, pivots are pretty uh, damn cool. Uh, here is the option flow. Uh, big move here, 128, <laughs> went, to, went to 120, went to 132. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it's not that, it's not that I'm on fire, okay? Guys, it just, as much as I would love to take all the credit, it's technical analysis. And, and once you embrace technical analysis, and I've been saying this, you know, you can start trading with a lot of confidence because the moral of the story is you're putting in, you're putting yourself in a position that you're not guessing. You're collecting the data, and the most important part is you're you're waiting for that confirmation technically, not emotionally. Not, you're not guessing. You're waiting for everything to play out technically. The problem for tomorrow, and again, this is the only problem we're looking at here. The fact that 
uh, the NASDAQ 100 held. And you can see here how, you know, after the big sell-off and you had over, you know, nearly 500 points uh, on the QQ, uh, on the NASDAQ composite, on the NDX, NDX, excuse me, on the X, NDX for two days selling. What I like what the bulls did was they reclaimed the 10 day moving average and they reclaimed this linear regression line, which is a very bullish symbol, uh, signal. The problem going into tomorrow is if you look at all the charts, they're in no man's land, right? Like if you look at Amazon, it's, these are the 60 minute views. It's a no man's land. Uh, beyond, it's a no man's land. Again, you'd have to go all the way up here uh, to catch a move. Uh, NVIDIA is a no man's land. And they still look like they want to go lower. So I think tomorrow's session is going to be uh, very, very tricky, guys. I, I mean really, really tricky. And today uh, we had a really good hand to play, okay, a premium hand to play. And like I say every single day, you have to, you know, you have to recognize the landscape before the trading day. And based on uh, tonight's research, yeah, of course, you know, there's some names I like. Of course, there's some names I like to the long side. There's some names I like to the short side. But the point is you're not trying to you're not trying to play overextended moves. So if you had a 500 point move, uh, you know, if you have a 500 point move, for example, in the NDX in two days, and Amazon has gone from 3,300 to 3 uh, to 3,000, you got 300 points literally in 24 hours. I mean, how much more do you want out of it? Of course, it could go lower. But the point is trying to find plays that maybe are just starting to break down. And the fact that we had that 9% run. In, in just in the last week on, on the NASDAQ 100, you're going to have a lot of plays in the middle of their channels, and that's the kind of the obstacle that we're faced for tomorrow. So tomorrow, guys, you know, again, we'll, we'll see how the futures open up or down. Um, again, I'm not in any rush every single day. I want to see how the market plays out. And again, if we have to start our day tomorrow on the first 10 o'clock candle, that's exactly what we want to do. Again, the last thing we want to do is try to recreate today's session knowing that tomorrow's value is going to be nowhere near what we saw today. So stay patient, everybody. Uh, let the trades come to you. And with God's help, I'll see you all there. Take care, guys. Have a great, great night.